good morning one and all uh, welcome to today's video session in the last week uh, well in the last video we had the types of grammar and in this session we are going to cover the phrase structure grammar and uh, its language uh, the lexicons of the language and passive for sentence formation and uh, over generation and uh, under generation of grammar those parts we are going to discuss right in the last week uh, in the last video we had uh, what is uh, types of grammar and all so now we are going to in the natural language processing systems so we are going to form the natural language for the processing system in the form of phrase structure grammar the phrase structure grammar is a formal work in the field of natural language processing that describe the hierarchical structure of sentences in the language so the hierarchical structure uh, indicates which form of sentence uh, which phrase of sentence comes first and which is a phrase of a sentence comes in the next category next level it will be described in the phrase structure grammar in syntactic model used to analyze the to analyze and generate the sentences based on the arrangement of phrases and the relation between them between them that is that the phrases we have different types of phrases verb phrase noun phrase proportional phrase all these things and in the formation of sentences how these phrases can be arranged for making a meaningful sentences for meaningful uh, generation of sentences so and uh, for analysis of sentences this syntactic uh, syntactic model will be useful so they are based on the concept of phrase structure which represents the hierarchical organization of words and phrases in the sentences that's what we have discussed so in the phrase structure grammar it will be hierarchical structure will be there so based on the in the hierarchical structure we are going to organize different phrases the phrases may be uh, the verb phrase noun phrase and propositional phrase or some other adjective phrase or whatever so that we are going to organize in a proper way for generation of sentences and analyzing, analyzing the sentence sentences and the phrase uh, the psc uh, employs a set of rules typically expressed in the context free grammar the bottom the, the context free grammar rules we had in the last uh, video i explained the same rules we are going to apply for generation of sentences and uh, analyzing the sentences that formed through the phrase structure grammar these rules define the possible combination of the constituents here the constituents are the the phrases and the relationship between them how this combination of the one type of phrase with uh, the uh, other type of phrase in the forming the sentences will all deals with the rules and the constituents in the psc are often labeled with the grammatical categories like uh, uh, noun phrase and verb phrase and propositional phrase or articles whatever so this combinations in what combinations we have to put that is a noun phrase verb phrase or proposition phrase or noun phrase proposition phrase or verb phrase like that a sequence noun phrase proposition phrase or verb phrase or verb phrase noun phrase a proposition phrase what the combination what the sequence and what is the combination that will form the sentences that going to for generation of sentences and for analyzing the sentence this particular uh, the way of grammar uh, will be useful so the uh, psc grammar consists of uh, the uh, ingredients like uh, terminal symbols any grammar uh, what we have discussed any grammar consists of four tuples one is terminal symbols non terminal symbols and production rules and uh the starting symbol so if you have any uh, clarification is required just to see my previous video about the uh, the grammar the contents of the grammar and all according to the norm chomsky so here uh, in the particular language if you go for the particular language like english and all what is the terminal symbols terminals uh, that represents the basic units of the language there is a generally we can consider the lowest level in the hierarchy what is available that is the words so uh, these words are the uh, represents the terminal symbols the so typically corresponds with words are punctuation marks and so on so these symbols cannot be further broken down into smaller units within the grammar so if you want to get the meaningful sentences so these uh, come these words we can't be able to go for the further, further level so there itself the meaning will form that is the basic level that is the lowest level in the hierarchical structure that is nothing but words for example if you consider the sentence so like uh, the cat sat on the mat 
in this particular thing particular sentence the combination of the uh, terminals are the uh, the bottom most one in the hierarchical structure that is uh, the words the words are cat the cat sat on the and uh, the, that is a mat of course the comma or full stop also we can consider and sometimes uh, this combination maybe uh, go for the parts of uh, speech tags to capture their grammatical role in the sentences so these are the the terminal symbols that we can consider the ingredients of the grammar generally known as lexicons next one is a uh, the components of the uh, the ingredients of the grammar that is a uh, non terminal symbols non terminal symbols represents the larger units of the language when compared to the the terminals so as a phrases are sentence of uh, sen sentence structures that is a phrases means a combination of words if you uh, following particular order if you put a meaningful form a short meaningful form will generate there is nothing but a phrase and uh, putting together in the combination of uh, larger form if you consider that is a uh, the sentence structure these symbols are defined by a rules that specify how they can be combined to form the uh, larger structures that is a noun phrase is combination of determinant and uh, the noun like that a noun phrase is combination of the determinant and noun so this combination will go for a phrase and uh, these phrases mix uh, they combine together it will form a sentences non terminal symbols do not appear directly in the sentences but are used to generate or analyzing the sentences so for example the cat is sleeping there are two uh, phrases are available the cat cat is sleeping so the cat is noun phrase the cat is sleeping and cat is sleeping is verb phrase so there are two phrases here the cat that is noun phrase cat is sleeping is a verb phrase so uh, uh, the combination of this one uh, will form a sentence like that this are comes under non terminals and the phrase structure grammar how the sentence is formed means so the combination of terminals and non terminals so the how this uh, terminals and non terminals combine together that will defined by the phrase structure rules or that is nothing but production rule so this may be a, suppose if you want to form a um, sentence it will form the combination of the first one is a noun phrase and a verb phrase there is a one simple example how the constituent that is uh, the phrase structure rules uh, they determine how the constituents can be combined to form larger constituents and ultimately build up a complete sentence that's what so putting the terminal symbols and non terminal symbols in the what uh, manner that is a sequence a terminal non terminal or terminals and terminal terminals non terminals and terminals so which combination that we have to put so that it will form a sentence the rules describe uh, the syntactic relationship between the different constituents of uh, the different components of the sentence the rules what uh, the phrase structure rules will provide syntactic relationship between the different constituents of the sentences right then hierarchical structure phrase structure grammar represents the hierarchical structure of the sentences this uh, the constituents the organized in a tree like structure commonly known as phrase uh, parse tree as syntax tree so that is a top level is a complete sentence we can put and while the uh, go for the uh, sub notes that represents the constituent phrases that is the uh, phrases the last one uh, the, uh, the bottom one is called the, the lowest hierarchy will represents the the terminal symbols the phrase to illustrate the syntax uh, syntactic relationship and the order in which the constituents are combined so that we will we are going to explain with uh, some example in uh, in the next slide suppose uh, in the uh, for, in the formation of one example so we'll take uh, the what is the formation rules fsc rules so s is a sentence so the grammar consists of four tuples one is ter non terminals terminals and uh, production rules and s where the uh, uh, here in this particular formation we are taking the production rule that is s is a symbol sentence so that is a combination of non phrase noun phrase and verb phrase so the uh, the sentence th that is a rule one 
So when you go for rule two, then again, again norm phase can be uh, will go for further expansion. That indicates that noun and uh, the determinant and noun. Noun phase is the uh, it will be expanded so that it means determinant and phase. Determinant may be articles. Okay, then uh, the go for the verb phase. It is uh, can be formed by verb and followed by noun phase. A uh, verb phase can be uh, formed by verb phase can be formed by verb and noun phase, right? So these are the production rules. Now, this uh, how we can able to form the sentence. Suppose that the cat eats fish. That is a sentence. So here uh, the sentence is formed with the noun phase and verb phase. That is given with the n n p v p. So where n p is determinant and noun vp is verb phase and noun phase so determinant that we can put the n represents the cat that we can put in, term, in place of n we can put cat so that uh, we can go for the uh, one by one in the fourth sentence we can see fourth line we can see the determinant we can replace with the third line a uh, fourth line we can replace the determinant is replaced with the the proposition the and uh, the second line uh, the noun is replaced with the cat there is a fifth line and the sixth line the cat verb is replaced with the eats right and uh, the last line the noun phase is replaced with the fish so the cat eat fish this is the order how we can able to generate the sentences so in the phrase structure grammar the same method that we can also apply for uh, checking the <coughs> uh, whether the sentence is up to the mark there is a grammatically it is correct or not also we can able to check by bottom up approach or some analysis method following the same principles and in this uh, probability uh, the contest phrase that is a um, phrase structure grammar we can generate any sentences but uh, the which sentence is the best that we if you want to uh, analyze then we can go for a probabilistic contest free grammar. So the probabilistic contest free grammar is a formalism uh, used in the natural language processing and the computational linguistic to describe the syntax of the language. The same thing, the, what is the phrase structure grammar is that the same thing here, but the only thing is we are going to add the probabilistic for formation of the production rules. So it is augmented by probability value that the approximation rule is uh, uh, represented with the probability value so uh, which indicates uh, likelihood of choosing that particular rule these possibilities allow us to model the likelihood of different syntactic structures of well, uh, and uh, they generate the sentences that are more likely to occur in natural languages for uh, forming the sentences and all we can go for the probabilistic Contest free grammar and all. So, for example, in the uh, the same for this also, there will be four tuples. One is a terminus, non terminus, production rules, and the starting symbol will be there. So, so, the starting symbol we follow A produces B or alpha produces the beta. The same rule. So, here the same thing we can represent, but the production rule instead of in the previous case, we have just alpha produces the beta form represented. So, in the rule is represented with the probability. So probability P uh, of producing alpha, uh, uh, producing beta from alpha, alpha produces the beta, what is the probability of producing uh, beta from alpha or probability of producing, uh, no, probability of alpha producing the beta, which represents the likelihood cho choosing that rule to deliver, uh, to derive a symbol alpha or a sentence. So suppose in any language there is a big list of words that we can call as a lexicon. So those are called terminals, terminal symbols. The terminal symbols in the any language, if you consider English, there are different types of languages that we, if we go for the dictionary, you can see nouns, pronouns, names are uh, denote to the things and the verbs, so adjectives, so adverbs, so functional words, so that is article, proposition, conjunctions, all these things will be there. This all comes together, put together, it will become a, uh, these are the lowest part in the language, the uh, uh, lowest level in the language that is nothing but 
the terminal symbols which we can call as a lexicons of the language that is English language. And uh, for the uh, each word in a particular context, uh, it is given with uh, the probability value. So probabilistic context free grammar, each one is represented with uh, some probability value. So for the noun, so some words are given. So for that, what is the probability of occurring in the sentences that is available here? So if it's a noun, strange 0.05, bridge 0.1, vampers 0.15, pits 0.05. So similarly for each and every word, what is the probability of occurring uh, center formation the power is given. Now with this, uh, we are going to apply the same rules and we are going to create a sentence. So we have uh, six syntactic categories, that is the uh, rules. One is a uh, yes produces noun phrase and verb phrase or the sentence may be produces with the sentence in conjunction with other sentence. If the sentence is formed with a noun phrase and verb phrase, the probability of occurrence will be 0.9. That is, uh, I feel a branch, uh, breeze. I is a noun phrase, verb phrase is feel breeze. So if that sentence is formed like that combination, it will be a 0.9. If it is a sentence is conjunction with the other sentence, then it will be uh, 0.1. The probability of occurrence of the sentence is 0.1. Like that, uh, a noun phrase, what is the probability, a uh, verb phrase uh, comes means, what is the probability for the each word that is given in this particular representation. Now, if the combination, if you take one example, every vampire smells. So, the entire thing will represent a sentence. If the sentence is formed with a noun phrase and verb phrase, it is 0.9. Here, in this particular one, every is a noun. Uh, uh, there is a, uh, this article and the vampus is a noun. So a noun phrase is a article and a noun and the verb is a smell. So so in front of the table, if the sentence is formed with a noun phrase and verb phrase, it's a point nine. So next one is a noun phrase. If the noun phrase is formed with the article and a noun that is given with the table, if the article comes means point not five with a word every. If the noun comes with a, a word vampus, that is point one five. And in the verb phrase, if the uh, form means 0.4, if the verb comes with a uh, smell, uh, that is 0.1. So if you put all together in a mathematical form, that is a multiply the from top to bottom, all the probability value, then uh, what is the uh, probable acceptance of these sentences that we can able to get? The probability of acceptance or probability of formation of the sentences that we can able to represent in the mathematical and numerical expression form. Right. So, in the formation of sentences, sometimes uh, uh, it may go for uh, different ways. That is, uh, uh, over generation, under generation. Over generation happens when a system produces linguistic structures. Uh, are sentences that do not valid or acceptable in the target language. That is, it go for the producing the sentences, but uh, the sentences may be not uh, as per the language. It may sometimes we may reject it because of the language may be correct, but it may be uh, some grammatical mistakes that we can, uh, because of this, we can reject it. It occurs when the system generates more possibilities than what actually grammatically correct or appropriate. So, uh, the for example, uh, so that is it consists of non essential or non grammatical sentences. Suppose we can take uh, one example, I will be happy at the oranges. So, in this particular thing, the, at the oranges does not make any sense in the sentence. So, uh, that is over generated sentence. So, that is because of over generated grammar. And uh, there is another situation that is under generation that is. Uh, occurs when the linguistic system fails to produce or allow certain valid or uh, acceptable sentences or structure that are part of the target language. I is going to the store. So here the grammatically yam has to come but is has uh, available. So as I should be followed by the verb yam instead of is. This uh, subject verb arrangement is incorrect. This way of uh, the problem uh, the, that we are going to see in the under generation grammar. These are the things uh, that uh, available for uh, uh, phrase structure grammar as per the syllabus. And I request all to please share 
my videos and subscribe for further my uh, similar videos on the same subject but don't forget to like my video thank you very much